Welcome to Dark Tales, 10 Chilling Stories of Female Serial Killers from Around the World. In this video, we will take you on a bone-chilling journey into the darkest corners of humanity as we explore the haunting stories of 10 infamous female serial killers. From different corners of the globe, these women have shocked the world with their cold-blooded crimes and left an indelible mark on history. Join us as we unravel the motives, methods, and disturbing legacies of these notorious figures, showcasing the horrifying potential that lies within the female psyche. Raya and Sakina, the infamous serial killers of Egypt. The story of Raya and Sakina, also known as the Nile Sisters, is one of the most chilling and captivating tales of crime in Egyptian history. These two sisters shocked the nation with their brutal acts of murder during the early 20th century. This article explores the dark legacy of Raya and Sakina and the impact they had on Egyptian society. Raya and Sakina Gohar were born in the late 19th century in the village of Sharkia, Egypt. Their early lives seemed unremarkable, but as they grew older, they became entangled in a world of crime that would earn them a place in Egyptian folklore. During the 1910s and 1920s, Raya and Sakina embarked on a spree of violent robberies and murders that left the nation in shock and terror. Their modus operandi was to seduce and lure wealthy men before robbing and killing them. Their victims, often prominent figures in Egyptian society, fell prey to their charms and met gruesome ends at the hands of the Nile sisters. The sheer audacity of their crimes captured the attention of the public and the media, making them celebrities of sorts. The newspapers of the time sensationalized their deeds, dubbing them the Satanic Sisters and portraying them as femme fatale who used their beauty to ensnare their victims. This added an air of mystique and fascination around Raya and Sakina, despite the horror they unleashed. The reign of terror of the Nile Sisters came to an end in 1921 when they were apprehended by the authorities. They were put on trial, and their shocking acts were laid bare for the world to see. The details of their crimes horrified the public, and the courtroom was filled with a mix of fascination and repulsion. In 1922, Raya and Sakina were found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. Their fate sent shockwaves through Egyptian society, marking a dark chapter in the country's history. The execution of the Nile sisters became a significant event, with crowds gathering to witness their final moments. The case of Raya and Sakina continues to captivate the imaginations of Egyptians to this day. Their story has been immortalized in books, plays, and movies, further fueling the fascination surrounding their crimes. Their tale serves as a cautionary reminder of the depths of human depravity and the destructive power that can be unleashed by individuals driven by creed and malice. The legacy of Raya and Sakina lives on as a symbol of the dark underbelly of society. Their crimes and the public's reaction to them have left an indelible mark on Egyptian culture and serve as a reminder of the importance of justice and the need for vigilance in the face of evil. While the Nile sisters may have met their demise many decades ago, their story serves as a haunting reminder that evil can lurk even in the most unexpected places, forever etching their names in the annals of Egyptian criminal history. Beverly Alit, the Angel of Death Serial Killer Beverly Alit, often referred to as the Angel of Death, is one of Britain's most notorious female serial killers. Her chilling acts of violence and betrayal sent shockwaves through the healthcare profession and the nation as a whole. This article delves into the dark story of Beverly Alit and the crimes that earned her a life sentence behind bars. Born on October 4, 1968, in Grantham, Lincolnshire, Alit seemed like an ordinary young woman with a promising career ahead of her. She pursued her passion for nursing and trained as a pediatric nurse at Grantham and Castephen Hospital. Little did anyone know that her path would take a sinister turn. Alit's reign of terror began in February 1991 when she was employed as a state enrolled nurse at Grantham and Castephen Hospital. Over a period of just 59 days, she targeted innocent children under her care, exploiting their vulnerability for her own sadistic pleasure. Using her position of trust, Alit injected lethal doses of insulin and potassium into her young patients, aged between 7 weeks and 11 years old. She would often smother them, causing cardiac arrests, or induce attacks of acute hypoglycemia, resulting in seizures and life-threatening conditions. The consequences of her actions were devastating. 
for children lost their lives due to Alit's calculated and heartless acts. Additionally, she caused grievous harm to numerous other victims, leaving them with lifelong disabilities and severe physical and mental impairments. Authorities initially struggled to identify the cause of these tragic incidents, suspecting an outbreak of natural illnesses. It was only after a five-week investigation, combined with a suspiciously high number of unexplained deaths, that Ola came under scrutiny. Eventually, the pieces of the puzzle started to come together. Alit's colleagues began to notice her proximity to the critical incidents, leading them to raise concerns about her behavior. The hospital staff alerted the police, sparking a thorough investigation into the shocking crimes. In May 1993, Beverly Alit stood trial at Nottingham Crown Court, facing 13 charges, including murder, attempted murder, and causing grievous bodily harm. The courtroom was left in disbelief as chilling details of her actions were revealed. Alit's defense team argued that she suffered from Munchausen syndrome by proxy, a psychological disorder where individuals harm others to gain attention or sympathy. However, the jury rejected this defense and found her guilty on all charges. The judge handed down a sentence of 13 life terms, ensuring that Alit would spend the rest of her days behind bars. Her actions shattered the trust placed in healthcare professionals, leaving a lasting impact on the medical community and society as a whole. The case of Beverly Alit continues to captivate and horrify people worldwide. It serves as a reminder of the darkness that can lurk behind seemingly ordinary individuals, highlighting the importance of vigilance and thorough background checks in professions involving the care of vulnerable individuals. Today, Beverly Alit remains incarcerated at Rampton Secure Hospital, a high-security psychiatric hospital in Nottinghamshire. Her case serves as a chilling reminder that evil can hide in plain sight, even in the most trusted professions. Martha Needle, the Poisonous Mistress of Murder Martha Needle, a name that strikes fear and intrigue, is known as one of Australia's most notorious female serial killers. Her chilling crimes and the twisted web of deceit she wove have fascinated and horrified people for over a century. In this article, we delve into the life and crimes of Martha Needle, shedding light on the dark legacy she left behind. Born Martha Needle, née Williams, on June 9, 1864, in Wilmot, Tasmania, she grew up in a humble family. Martha's life seemed ordinary until tragedy struck. She married Henry Needle and together they had three children. However, the Needle household was plagued by misfortune as two of their children died in infancy. This marked the beginning of a series of events that would reveal Martha Needle's true nature. Martha's lust for insurance money led her down a dark path. In 1891, her husband Henry fell mysteriously ill and died, leaving her as the sole beneficiary of his life insurance policy. This tragedy, however, was just the beginning. Over the next few years, Martha continued her spree of poisonings, targeting her own children and various family members. Her method of choice was arsenic, a deadly substance that she administered in small doses. Martha Needle used her role as a caregiver and nurturer to gain the trust of her victims, appearing as a loving mother and wife. She manipulated those closest to her taking advantage of their vulnerabilities and exploiting their trust to carry out her heinous acts. Martha's crimes went unnoticed for some time, as the symptoms of arsenic poisoning were often attributed to other illnesses or accidents. However, suspicions eventually arose, and an investigation was launched. Martha's dark secrets began to unravel, and the truth behind the deaths that plagued her family came to light. In 1894, Martha Needle faced trial for the murder of her husband and two children. The courtroom was captivated by the chilling details of her crimes, and the nation followed the proceedings with morbid fascination. Despite her attempts to portray herself as an innocent victim, the evidence against her was overwhelming. Martha Needle was found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. On October 22, 1894, she met her fate at Melbourne Jail, becoming the first woman in Victoria's history to be executed. Her case sparked widespread debate and raised questions about the nature of female criminality, leaving a lasting impact on the Australian justice system. The legacy of Martha Needle continues to capture the imagination of true crime enthusiasts and historians alike. 
Her story serves as a reminder of the darkness that can reside within seemingly ordinary individuals and the devastating consequences of their actions. Martha Needle's case also played a significant role in shaping the perception of female murderers in society, challenging preconceived notions about women's capacity for violence. Martha Needle's name lives on in infamy, forever associated with the chilling crimes she committed. Her story serves as a cautionary tale, a reminder to remain vigilant and to seek justice for the innocent victims whose lives she callously took. The tale of Martha Needle stands as a chilling reminder that evil can lurk in the most unexpected places, forever etching her name in the annals of Australian criminal history. Jean Weber, the disturbed nanny turned murderer. In the annals of criminal history, certain names stand out as chilling reminders of the darkness that can reside within the human psyche. Jean Weber, a disturbed nanny turned murderer, is one such name that continues to intrigue and horrify to this day. In this article, we delve into the life and crimes of Jean Weber, shedding light on the chilling tale of a woman whose actions shocked the world. Born on December 12, 1874, in Le Mans, France, Jean Weber seemed like an ordinary woman on the surface. She led a seemingly unremarkable life until her true nature was exposed. Weber worked as a nanny, entrusted with the care of young children in various households. Little did those families know that behind her seemingly benign facade lay a sinister and deadly secret. Weber's reign of terror began in 1905 when a series of unexplained deaths and illnesses struck the family she worked for. Children under her care fell mysteriously ill, and many tragically succumbed to their ailments. Suspicion soon fell upon Weber, as the eerie pattern of illnesses and deaths raised red flags. Authorities launched an investigation into the suspicious circumstances surrounding the children's deaths. What they discovered was shocking. Jean Weber was not only present during these tragic incidents but was revealed to be the common link between them. The evidence against her began to mount, revealing a dark and twisted motive for her actions. It was soon revealed that Weber had a disturbing obsession with suffering and death. She derived a perverse pleasure from inflicting harm on the innocent children under her care. Her preferred method of murder was suffocation, often employing a handkerchief or pillow to smother her unsuspecting victims. The motives behind her actions remain shrouded in mystery, leaving many to speculate on the twisted workings of her mind. Jean Weber's reign of terror came to an end in 1905 when she was apprehended by the authorities. She stood trial for multiple counts of murder and faced the consequences of her heinous crimes. The courtroom was captivated by the chilling details of her actions, struggling to comprehend the depths of her depravity. Weber was found guilty of murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. Her case sent shockwaves throughout France and beyond, raising questions about the safety of children in the care of seemingly trustworthy individuals. It also sparked discussions surrounding mental health and the potential warning signs that may be missed in cases like Weber's. The story of Jean Weber serves as a stark reminder that evil can lurk in the most unsuspecting places. Her actions shattered the trust of families who had placed their children in her care, forever changing their lives. Weber's case also exposed the need for increased vigilance and scrutiny when it comes to the welfare of children, highlighting the importance of thorough background checks and close monitoring in childcare settings. Jean Weber's name will forever be associated with the horror she unleashed upon the innocent. Her story continues to fascinate and disturb, serving as a cautionary tale about the potential dangers that may lurk behind a seemingly ordinary exterior. The legacy of Jean Weber stands as a chilling reminder of the darkness that can reside within the human soul and the importance of remaining vigilant in the face of potential threats to our most vulnerable. Anna Barasa In the realm of criminal history, there are few cases as intriguing and chilling as that of Juana Barasa, also known as the Man of Egidas or the Old Lady Killer. Barasa's reign of terror in Mexico City shocked the nation and left an indelible mark on the true crime landscape. In this article, we delve into the life and crimes of Juana Barraza, shedding light on her dark and twisted path. Born on December 27, 1957, in Hidalgo, Mexico, Juana Barraza's early life was marked by hardship and tragedy. Abandoned by her mother and raised by an alcoholic grandmother, Barraza experienced a tumultuous childhood that laid the groundwork for the violent path she would eventually embark upon. 
Parasa's criminal activities began in the late 1990s when a string of murders targeting elderly women gripped Mexico City in fear. The victims, all women over the age of 60, were brutally attacked and strangled in their own homes. The chilling nature of these crimes, combined with the vulnerability of the victims, sent shockwaves throughout the city. For years, the authorities struggled to identify the perpetrator behind these heinous acts. The elusive nature of the killer left the police and the public bewildered and fearful. But in 2005, a breakthrough occurred that would finally bring Juana Barraza's reign of terror to an end. Barraza's capture came as a result of a fortuitous encounter. A police officer, patrolling the streets, noticed a suspicious woman leaving the home of one of the victims. The officer, acting on his instincts, apprehended Barraza, and in doing so, unknowingly brought an end to one of Mexico's most notorious murder sprees. During her interrogation, Barraza confessed to the murders of several elderly women. Her motivations for the killings were revealed to be a complex mix of deep-seated anger, resentment, and a desire for revenge. Barraza harbored a particular disdain for elderly women, which stemmed from her troubled relationship with her own mother and grandmother. Barraza's modus operandi involved gaining access to her victims' homes under the pretense of offering assistance or posing as a government worker. Once inside, she would overpower her victims, often using a garrote to strangle them into submission. The brutality and calculated nature of her crimes painted a disturbing picture of a woman driven by an insatiable urge to inflict pain and suffering. In 2008, Juana Barraza stood trial for her crimes, facing charges of murder and burglary. The courtroom was captivated by the chilling details of her crimes, as well as the psychological factors that contributed to her violent behavior. Barraza's case highlighted the complex interplay between personal experiences, trauma, and the development of a serial killer. Ultimately, Barraza was found guilty of multiple counts of murder and sentenced to 759 years in prison. Her case sparked widespread media attention and public discourse surrounding the treatment of women in the criminal justice system and the motivations behind female serial killers. Juana Barraza's story serves as a chilling reminder of the depths of human depravity and the potential for evil that exists within society. Her crimes shattered the lives of countless families and forever scarred the collective memory of Mexico City. The legacy of Juana Barraza stands as a cautionary tale, urging us to remain vigilant and attentive to the signs of violence and abuse that can fester within the darkest corners of the human psyche. Helen Chicago In the annals of criminal history, the name Helen Chicago stands out as one of the most notorious female serial killers. Known as the Angel Maker or the Poisoner of Brittany, Chicago's reign of terror in 19th century France sent shockwaves through the region and left a trail of death and devastation in her wake. In this article, we delve into the chilling story of Helen Chicago and the crimes that earned her a place in the dark annals of true crime. Helen Chicago was born on February 1803 in Plauhanec, a small village in the Brittany region of France. Little is known about her early life, but her later actions would reveal a deeply disturbed and sinister individual. Chicago's criminal activities began in the early 1830s when she embarked on a spree of poisoning, targeting her employers and acquaintances with deadly substances. What set Chicago apart from other murderers of her time was the variety of toxic substances she employed to carry out her heinous acts. Arsenic, lead, and mercury were among the deadly ingredients she used to poison her victims, often disguising the taste by incorporating them into food or beverages. Her victims ranged from employers and friends to children and even her own family members. Chicago's motive for her crimes remains a subject of speculation and debate. Some believe she was driven by a thirst for financial gain, poisoning her victims in an attempt to inherit their possessions or steal their valuables. Others suggest that she derived a perverse pleasure from watching her victims suffer and die, reveling in the power and control she exerted over their lives. The extent of Chicago's crimes only came to light in 1851 when suspicions arose surrounding a sudden increase in deaths within her circle. Authorities launched an investigation, and upon searching Chicago's home, they discovered a stash of poisonous substances and incriminating evidence linking her to the deaths. Overwhelmed by the weight of the evidence against her, Chicago eventually confessed to her crimes, 
revealing a staggering number of victims. Chicago's trial in 1852 captivated the nation, with the media and the public closely following the proceedings. Her chilling demeanor and lack of remorse during the trial only served to solidify her reputation as a heartless and cold-blooded killer. The court found her guilty of multiple counts of murder, and she was sentenced to death by guillotine. On February 26, 1852, Helen Chicago met her fate on the executioner's scaffold. Her demise marked the end of a dark chapter in French history, but the legacy of her crimes would endure. Chicago's case brought to light the vulnerability of society to individuals with a penchant for manipulation and violence, leaving an indelible mark on the public consciousness. The story of Helen Chicago serves as a haunting reminder of the darkness that can lurk within the human soul. Her crimes underscore the capacity for evil that exists in even the most unassuming individuals, and the lasting impact they can have on the lives of those unfortunate enough to cross their paths. As we reflect on the legacy of Helen Chicago, we are reminded of the importance of vigilance and the constant need to safeguard against those who may seek to exploit and harm others for their own twisted desires. Maria Swainenberg In the annals of criminal history, the name Maria Swainenberg echoes as one of the most infamous female serial killers in the Netherlands. Known as the Goemia or the Poisoner of Leiden, Swainenberg's murderous spree in the late 19th century shocked the nation and left a trail of death and despair in its wake. In this article, we delve into the chilling story of Maria Swainenberg and the dark secret she concealed within her seemingly innocuous persona. Maria Swainenberg was born on September 9, 1839, in Leiden, a city in the province of South Holland, Netherlands. She grew up in a modest family and was known for her unassuming appearance and amiable demeanor, which made her a trusted member of the community. However, behind her friendly facade lurked a sinister and twisted mind. Swainenberg's crimes began in the 1880s when she embarked on a spree of poisoning that targeted her friends, family members, and acquaintances. Her weapon of choice was arsenic, a deadly substance that she discreetly incorporated into food and beverages. As the poison took effect, her victims suffered excruciating pain and eventually succumbed to their deaths. The motives behind Swainenberg's actions remain a subject of speculation and debate. Some suggest that she was driven by financial gain, as she often targeted individuals who had insurance policies or considerable assets. By eliminating her victims, she sought to inherit their wealth and increase her own prosperity. Others believe that Swainenberg derives sadistic pleasure from watching her victims suffer, gaining a twisted sense of power and control over their lives. What set Swainenberg apart from other murderers was her ability to deceive and manipulate those around her. She skillfully played the role of a caring and compassionate friend, offering support to grieving families and even attending the funerals of her own victims. This facade of kindness and empathy allowed her to evade suspicion for an extended period, furthering the devastation she wrought upon her community. Swainenberg's crimes eventually came to light in 1885 when an unusually high number of deaths occurred within her circle. Authorities grew suspicious and launched an investigation into the matter. As evidence mounted, Swainenberg's true nature was revealed, and she was arrested in 1886. During her trial, Swainenberg's shocking confessions sent shockwaves through the courtroom. She admitted to poisoning at least 27 people, including her own parents, siblings, and children. Her lack of remorse and the callousness with which she recounted her actions horrified the public and earned her a reputation as one of the most heartless killers in Dutch history. Swainenberg was found guilty of multiple counts of murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. She spent the remainder of her days behind bars, serving her sentence at various correctional institutions in the Netherlands. Her case exposed the vulnerability of society to those who hide their true intentions behind a facade of kindness, reminding us of the need for vigilance and skepticism even in the most trusted individuals. The legacy of Maria Swainenberg serves as a chilling reminder of the capacity for evil that can reside within the human soul. Her crimes left an indelible mark on the community of Leiden and forever changed the lives of those affected by her actions. As we reflect on the story of Maria Swainenberg, we are reminded of the importance of remaining vigilant, questioning the motives of those around us, 
and uncovering the hidden truths that may lie beneath the surface of even the most seemingly benevolent individuals. Amelia Satch and Annie Walters, The Dark Tales of Murder and Infamy In the annals of true crime, the names Amelia Satch and Annie Walters stand as haunting reminders of the sinister underbelly of London's Victorian era. These two women became notorious for their involvement in a series of murders that shocked the city and left a legacy of fear and intrigue. In this article, we delve into the chilling story of Amelia Satch and Annie Walters, the unlikely duo whose crimes sent shockwaves through society. Amelia Satch, born Amelia Alice Flitters on October 1869 in Bethnal Green, and Annie Walters, born Annie Chapman, were both born into humble backgrounds and faced the harsh realities of life in poverty-stricken Victorian London. The circumstances of their lives set them on a path that would lead to a partnership steeped in darkness and murder. The infamous crimes committed by Satch and Walters were centered around their activities as baby farmers. During this period, unwed mothers faced severe societal stigma, and the concept of childcare as we know it today was virtually non-existent. Desperate women, unable to care for their infants, would turn to baby farmers who would supposedly provide care for a fee. However, in the case of Satch and Walters, their intentions were far from nurturing. Operating from their residence in Finchley, North London, Satch and Walters took in infants and young children, promising to care for them. But instead of providing a safe haven, they subjected these innocent lives to cruelty, neglect, and ultimately death. The true extent of their crimes remains unknown, but it is believed that they were responsible for the deaths of several children under their care. Their malevolent activities came to light in 1902 when the body of a baby boy, identified as Robert John Bobby Little, was discovered buried in the garden of their Finchley home. This shocking revelation sparked a widespread investigation that uncovered a chilling pattern of abuse and murder. Amelia Satch and Annie Walters were arrested and put on trial for their heinous crimes. The evidence against them was damning, with witnesses testifying to the neglect and mistreatment of children under their care. The court proceedings gripped the public's attention as the sordid details of their crimes were revealed. In 1903, both Satch and Walters were found guilty of murder. Amelia Satch was sentenced to death by hanging, while Annie Walters was sentenced to life imprisonment. On February 3, 1903, Satch met her fate on the gallows, her execution drawing a crowd of spectators eager to witness the punishment for her heinous crimes. The case of Amelia Satch and Annie Walters sent shockwaves through Victorian society, exposing the dark underbelly of the baby farming industry and the vulnerability of innocent lives. Their story serves as a reminder of the atrocities that can be committed under the guise of trust and compassion. The legacy of Amelia Satch and Annie Walters lingers as a chilling reminder of the depths to which human depravity can sink. Their crimes remain etched in the annals of true crime history, a dark chapter that reminds us to remain vigilant in protecting the most vulnerable members of society. As we reflect on the story of Amelia Satch and Annie Walters, we are reminded of the importance of safeguarding the innocent and upholding justice in the face of evil. Their crimes may have stained London's past, but their memory serves as a testament to the resilience of society in seeking justice and protecting those who cannot protect themselves. Farrah Renzi, The Mysterious Mistress of Deception In the realm of criminal history, certain individuals leave an indelible mark due to their enigmatic nature and the web of deceit they spin. One such figure is Farrah Renzi, a woman shrouded in mystery and known for her skills in manipulation and fraud. In this article, we delve into the enigmatic life of Vera Renzi and the captivating tales that surround her. Born in the early 20th century, Vera Renzi's early life remains largely obscured by the fog of time. The details of her upbringing, family background, and early experiences are elusive, which only adds to the intrigue that surrounds her. It is believed that she hailed from Eastern Europe and had a remarkable gift for deception and illusion from a young age. Farrah Renzi's notoriety began to flourish in the 1930s and 1940s when she embarked on a career as a confidence trickster. Her modus operandi involved assuming different identities and preying on unsuspecting individuals, exploiting their trust and vulnerabilities for personal gain. She had an uncanny ability to adapt her appearance, mannerisms, and stories to fit her chosen persona, 
making it incredibly difficult for her victims to see through her charade. One of the most infamous scams associated with Vera Renzi was her involvement in a series of fraudulent investment schemes. Posing as a wealthy businesswoman with access to exclusive investment opportunities, she lured in unsuspecting investors with promises of high returns and guaranteed profits. Many individuals, hoping to secure their financial futures, fell victim to her elaborate ruse, losing substantial sums of money in the process. What set Vera Renzi apart from other con artists of her time was her talent for disappearing without a trace. After amassing a considerable fortune through her fraudulent activities, she would vanish, leaving her victims bewildered and searching for answers. Her ability to evade capture and reinvent herself in new locations made her an elusive and intriguing figure in the criminal underworld. However, Vera Renzi's streak of deception eventually came to an end when law enforcement agencies began to close in on her activities. The details of her ultimate capture and subsequent legal proceedings are shrouded in speculation and hearsay. Some accounts suggest that she was arrested and served time in prison for her crimes, while others claim that she managed to escape justice and continued her life of deception under a different identity. The true fate of Vera Renzi remains a subject of debate and speculation among historians and true crime enthusiasts. Some believe that she met a tragic end, while others argue that she simply vanished, leaving behind only whispers of her nefarious exploits. The lack of concrete information surrounding her life and ultimate fate adds to the air of mystique that still surrounds her name. Farrah Renzi's story serves as a cautionary tale, reminding us of the dangers of misplaced trust and the allure of illusion. Her ability to manipulate others and exploit their weaknesses underscores the importance of skepticism and critical thinking in a world where deception lurks at every turn. As we reflect on the enigmatic figure that is Vera Renzi, we are reminded of the complexities of human nature and the capacity for both good and evil that resides within us all. Her story remains a tantalizing enigma, a testament to the enduring allure of mystery and the dark allure of those who dwell in the shadows. Magdalena Solis in the annals of cult history, one name stands out for its chilling tales of manipulation, power, and gruesome rituals. Magdalena Solis, a charismatic figure from Mexico, rose to infamy in the 1960s as the leader of a cult known as the Blood Countess. In this article, we delve into the dark and disturbing life of Magdalena Solis and the horrors that unfolded under her rule. Born in 1945 in Mexico, Magdalena Solis was destined to become a figure of notoriety. Her early life remains mostly unknown, but it is believed that she hailed from a poor background and displayed signs of charismatic manipulation from an early age. It was her talent for persuasion and manipulation that ultimately propelled her to the forefront of a cult that would become the stuff of nightmares. In the late 1960s, Magdalena Solis formed a cult centered around her claim of being a reincarnation of an Aztec goddess. She convinced her followers that she had divine powers and could bring them prosperity and immortality. The cult, known as the Blood Countess, attracted individuals who were vulnerable, seeking meaning in their lives, or simply enthralled by Solis' magnetic personality. Under Solis' leadership, the Blood Countess cult engaged in a series of horrifying rituals and practices. Followers believed that through blood sacrifice, they could attain immortality and spiritual enlightenment. These rituals involved human sacrifice, with innocent victims being lured into the clutches of the cult and subjected to unimaginable acts of violence. One of the most notorious incidents involving Magdalena Solis and her cult took place in the summer of 1963. The cult kidnapped and brutally murdered a young boy named Sergio Puitraco. The child's blood was used in a sacrificial ritual, with Solis and her followers convinced that this act would grant them eternal life. The shocking nature of the crime sent shockwaves through the region, and authorities began to close in on Solis and her cult. In October 1963, Magdalena Solis and several of her followers were arrested and charged with multiple counts of murder, kidnapping, and other heinous crimes. The trial that followed was a spectacle of horror, as details of the cult's practices and beliefs were revealed to a shocked public. Solis, however, maintained her charismatic facade, displaying no remorse for the lives lost under her command. In April 1964, 
Magdalena Solis was found guilty of multiple counts of murder and sentenced to 50 years in prison. Her reign of terror had come to an end, but the scars left on the victims and the community would remain for years to come. The Blood Countess and her cult had left a legacy of fear and disbelief that would reverberate through Mexico and beyond. Magdalena Solis' story serves as a grim reminder of the dangers of unchecked charisma and the manipulation of vulnerable individuals. Her ability to exploit the trust and devotion of her followers underscores the importance of critical thinking and skepticism when encountering charismatic figures who claim supernatural powers. As we reflect on the dark chapter in history that was Magdalena Solis and the Blood Countess cult, we are reminded of the depths to which human beings can sink under the influence of twisted ideologies and charismatic leaders. The tale of Magdalena Solis is a haunting reminder of the potential for evil that exists within us all and the importance of remaining vigilant against those who seek to exploit our vulnerabilities for their own gain. These stories remind us that evil knows no gender, and the capacity for darkness exists in every corner of the globe. We hope this video has shed light on the terrifying reality of female serial killers and provided a chilling glimpse into their twisted minds. Let us not forget the victims whose lives were tragically cut short by these perpetrators. May their stories serve as a stark reminder of the importance of vigilance and the pursuit of justice. Thank you for joining us on this unsettling journey, and may we continue to learn from the chilling tales that history presents to us.